It's also trial. Right. It's like the first time. I'll no, see. you're right. I think that's the proper way to, to do it. Yeah. Malaysia, I'm talking to you, by the way. Yeah, it's like this guy's not even here. It's no. Just, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a trial. Um, okay, so what do we have? What did you just say? It elevates the goyim? Oh, so yeah. one of the neat things about Beis it will affect the goyim in a uh, much greater way than the first two. The first two have an the Beis Hamikdash has an effect on the world, so it, the first two for sure did have an effect on the non-Jews. However, the Chlalos, generally, it was Jews only, directly. The third Beis Hamikdash. Yes. Um, fine, yeah, one queen. No, the whole, I mean, even the queen Shiva. Uh, the third base Hamikdash will have a very profound and direct effect even on the mountains. Today, today, no, up until now, the base Hamikdash is actually, I mean, sometimes it's brought, there's also a base Hamikdash inside us, sometimes it speaks that that's the main base Hamikdash. The main base Hamikdash is the person, inside the person, the Yid. And the base Hamikdash in Yushalayim is, it comes through that. After that place happens, it comes through that. But the main Kavana, the Iker Mikdash, is inside the person, the Mikdash Haknimi. Which allows a person to see godliness, not just to hear, man, who's serving Abishters on a much bigger level, etc. In the future, it will have a very profound direct effect on the non-Jews. I don't know if they're going to be uh, affected as much as Eden. It's probably fair to say Eden will be affected much more. But it will have a direct effect on every single existence in this world. They'll say in the very and beam in the future about the Goyim coming to the base of Mikdash. Come, let's go to the house of Hashem. It's not just that they're going to end up coming, but the Gili Ashkina, the, the godly revelation, will affect them uh, in a very profound way. So when they go back, they're going to be serving the Abish there. What's the reason that in the first base, or in the second base of Mikdash? Didn't it have any influence on the non-Jews? Or the Shlemos, the first and the second. It did though, the second. It did happen, sure. Not 100%. It has an effect even on the physical world, the material world. Through the base Hamikdash, every, everything was affected. It's brought in Medvish that the, the fruit through the carbones that was connected, let's say, to the wine, and from this produce, from each aspect, gave a better taste in that aspect, in that type, in that species. So the the food physically tasted richer, tasted much better. So uh, direct effect into the world. Why didn't it? I guess our Veda wasn't feeling this. It does say that one of the differences by the second time when the Eden came to Eretz Yisrael, it was through Tshuva. It does say they were Misvada, but they didn't do Tshuva. Misvada is when they acknowledge their sin, to acknowledge the mistake, but they didn't completely fix it. They didn't completely return the Shleimus at Tshuva. So, uh, The effect of the Beis Hamikdash in the world is tied with the Yid. That's why in the Bracha of Yushalayim, if you ever know that you know, I'm sure you know this a lot, we, we say we ask the Abish to build Yushalayim, and all of a sudden it comes in the line and restore the Davidic dynasty. How does that come out? Build Yushalayim in your city, dwell in it, your Shkina should dwell in it. And, and restore the Davidic dynasty. What's going on? This is about building your Shalai. Davidic dynasty, that's the next one. So let's explain that. It explains at length how they're so 
interdependent, you cannot have the shleimus of the Beis Hamikdash without the restoration of the of the of Malchus Beis David. It's not only that they're connected; it's impossible for there to be the the Yerushalayim in its shleimus without the, without the Malchus Beis David. But why is the Malchus Beis David first? Why isn't it? Yeah, clearly you should have. You're asking why the order of the tefillah. The order, yeah. I don't know. The order of the tefillah obviously isn't far, far in chronological order. Uh, it says about this that Dafke then is the shleimus of Mashiach. That was Mashiach to be right there, but he's still not completely coming to the world until you have the Beisamik Tosh built. So the Beisamik Tosh is the last thing? No. Necessarily, no, no, no. Last thing would be Tchias Amesim. But the Shleimus, what we're asking for, it's Pra. Why is it put there? Because then there's Malchus Beis David the Shleimus. Ah. Then he's Mashiach Vadai the Shleimus. Right. That's part of his then. of his Malchus. That could only be after Beis Hamikdash. Uh-huh. It is possible the Beis Hamikdash will be before, uh, let's say, Mechias Amalek. Right. Before he was Goliath. But yeah, then, before that. Well, it's possible. I'm not saying it's going to. But then it will not be in its ultimate shleimus. It's not going to be in the ultimate completion until those things happen. So let's say we have the building of this right now. And then is Muhammad is the uh, Amalek. After Muhammad is of Amalek, the base Hamikdash will be greater. Right, they're all dependent on each other. So even if you have it, it could have an aliyah. It could, one could start yeah. and be completed at later. Yeah. But they're not, neither is complete or, completed unless they're both, each is completed. Each one affects the other. But other things about Tfiyas HaMesim, that the ultimate Shleim Muslim Beis HaMikdash will only be after Tfiyas HaMesim. Yeah. It's always going to have an aliyah. But on, uh, one of the things that's connected to uh, the Shekhinah coming down the clouds, first you have to have a uh, de- 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 destroy a mother. The Shekhinah coming down in this world in a permanent way is, is connected with destroying a mother. Before, before Mount Nantera and the, having the, mikta, the Mishkan, it was a fight with a mother. Before they even went into Eretz show where the Shekhinah would rest in this world, in Eretz Yisrael permanently, there was a fight with a mother again, right? They came again. The skies. Shaul HaMelech, his fighting with Amalek, was Hagdama to the building of Beis Hamidosh. Had he done his job completely, that would have been the third Beis Hamidosh. Would have been the first one, but the final one. Yeah. That would have been the final one. Yeah. The fighting of Amalek is something that is necessary for the Shekhinah to come down in this world in a way of Kavis, permanence. And one Mimer, so this is the great Mila of, of um, of Purim because they killed so many of Amalek, the, the uh, 75,000 that they killed were all Amalek, they didn't stop going to kill. But that allowed for a divine revelation to come down in a way of permanence like never before. Who did, did David Amalek fight Amalek? He did. Who? How? Um, did he? One second, I should think. Fished him. He fought around there to throw. Well, Elias was, was from Mali. Right? Um, I, I think know. so. Elias was Fished him. Which are not the same that are there now, by the way. Uh, I, I, uh, I should look into that before I answer. I spoke to you for David. The Shlomo didn't fight him. I believe anybody. did fight. Had some fight with Mali. He killed the Amalekites. He did, did kill a couple. Of, he could have killed a couple of Amalekites. Yeah. But Be'ikah, his Muhammad was around there to show that so that you're able to right. be safe and secure. And it wasn't uh, to wipe out completely Amalek. Um, so that says about Ein Hashem Shalem, Ein Akisi Shalem, Hashem Shalem is not complete until you have a Amalek. After then, there's a gila in the matzah in the way of peace. Um, okay, is that clear? Summary. Any questions on that?
Well, the effect of the Beis Hamikdash, even on the world, on the Goyim, is showing how, it's not just about the Goyim, but it's showing how the Beis Hamikdash effect is going to be felt in the world uh, more so than ever before. Drastically more. On a practical level, what's the first mitzvah that is applicable that's going to be when we have the third Beis Hamikdash? Sacrifice. First one is Shmita, the watch. Ah. Sacrifice, you have to have this and this in place. To the Levim? Levim, the places for Kayim too. But the, the mitzvah is, isn't just about Levim, it's about the Yidin always thinking about the Beis Hamikdash. It's always something on our mind. Because the Shmita, this that they would have watchmen, wasn't so much to steal. It's out of honor. It's like right. you're showing, you're always thinking about it. It's like the, the, the British, you know, the guard. They, right, they the don't guard. move, you know? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Right, those guards aren't for, uh, they're not yeah. looking for... If for they are, they're really school. bad at what they do. It's, yeah. <laughs> Incidentally, by the way, this might be a chiddush to you, that also the Menorah and other Kalin were hidden. So you know the iron was hidden? The iron, yeah. What about the iron you hidden? It's hidden under, under underneath hard parts. underneath there, yeah. somewhere over there. I don't know, directly under. But when Shleim HaMelech built the base Hamikdash to begin with, he, there's a place it's during the normal base Hamikdash, and there's also a place when it's destroyed where it was put there a hundred years before, and it's continuing to do its job there. Right. It's not just instead, but that's like that's part of it. That's part of building this Hamikdash. So it's there, down there. So all the Kalim we don't need to build. I don't know about all the Kalim. The Chayra it's referring to the main Kalim. Right, those oh, Kalim yeah. we don't need to build. I don't know. Like you know the Third Temple Institute or whatever. How they make um, like the Kalim, you know. You certainly don't have to have whatever was hidden. Right. Um, by the way, some Hasidic mentions that this idea of Machim Ha'arin Eini Min it didn't take this, uh, it took up space and it didn't take up space at the same time, is also true of the Menera and the other Kalim in the Kedosh, from the Semach Sev. Um, so get ready, we're going to see the Menera. Uh, I don't know if it's the one that David Amalek made or Moshe Rabbeinu made. David Amalek made one? He made, he made the preparations. I don't know if he made one actually. For the menorah? He, I don't know. David Amalek made the preparation for the base, first base of English. The gates was from David Amalek. That's for sure. And the, the Mikdash. The, the, no, the, the Mishkan. Where's the Mishkan? The Mishkan, so it's not, it was not destroyed. Right. It's hidden somewhere. So there's only there's two people that their actions are eternal. Moshe, Moshe and Dovramel. They were such a high level that the the Abishters dwelling in them was to such an extent that it's like Hashem's doing it. It's like Hashem's work. So Moshe. So therefore the Mishkan is still around. We don't know where. It's still around, and when the base of Mikdash comes, we'll get it too. It'll be revealed, and the same is true. Anything that David Amalek made. So, the third base Hamikdash that's going to come down is going to have this unique eternity about it. The physical material will be eternal. Any part that we're going to have that Moshe Rabbeinu made already has that. Yeah. So it's not going to be missing it. It will have that. Okay, clear so far? Another thing, the true place that I would mention about uh, Mashiach shall come very soon, and every Israel to Israel, and Israel to Yerushalayim, and Yerushalayim to the Arabayis, and to the base of Mikdash Lishli, and into the Kedosh HaKadoshim. Ada, what are you doing in the Kedosh HaKadoshim? The Kedosh HaKadoshim is only for the Kain God. And he only goes there. So. Even then, it's only once a year. Once a year, and that once a year, he only does the Shas Aveda. Even the Kain Gadol can only do it right. for his Aveda. So 
the Rebbe brings that you know there's an opinion when it says what he what he does there's an opinion that it's not just kain, uh, the Kain Gondol on Yom Kippur he could come any day he wants. The condition is what the Psukim say over there, what he has to bring. It has to be with that Aveda. But with that Aveda, he can come any time. And being that at loss and love, everybody's going to be uh, on the level of a Kayin, or even a Kayin Gadol. So the true place of a Yid is in the Kayin Kayin Shakadash. True places of a yid is it? almost done. Um, the true place of yid is Kedush Not Another every single yid has a, a connection to Kedush Hakadosh. Understand? So even if we're not all going in there physically, the Kohen Gadol uh, uh, is like the Shlia of the seaboard, right? Is that yeah? Of course, of course. Fine, but why are we saying that every single year we're going to go to Eretz Yisrael and into the base of Mikdash and into the Gate of Shagadoshim? Yeah. Uh, okay, any questions at this point? I think our time is up. Any questions? Why is Mashiach not here? That is a great question, and we have to keep asking that question. I don't know what the answer is, the explanation to that is. But well, we do know yeah. what we can do to bring it, which is to learn about Mashiach, especially about the Hamikdash, the Adam Torah Mitzvahs. Okay, you know how it says well, when we learn Hilchos Beis Hamikdash, we're actually building Beis Hamikdash. Right. right. The Mitzvah by of building Beis Hamikdash is eternal. It applies now as well. So learning about it isn't just like a, a good way of sibula to get to something else. It's actually building. Just but, like a carbon. Yeah. It's not By like it's higher about than it, a carbon. It's more fine, but that idea, learning about it, makes it. Right, so, and we can't build space and make dash at night, so how can we learn about Hilfus Beis Hamikdash at night? First of all, the spiritual Beis Hamikdash doesn't have any real limitations, but also if the Beis Hamikdash comes down, Milmaila, it doesn't have any of those limitations. It comes down at night, on Shabbos, Yom Tif, any day. It doesn't have those limitations. Those like limitations... Building, the actual thing of building, one of the halakhas is you can't build at night. You can't build it with your hands. Those limitations were never set but about. But we are building. building. So you're saying we're not building it then? No, it's as if we're building it's it. It's not as if. It Those is mamish. Look, look in the wrong it's not ones. It's mamish. Look, in halakha, those limitations were said about building it physically. I don't know. Doesn't mean it's any less real. If we say you're building it spiritually, it doesn't mean it's for fake. It's more than a car uh, carbon, though. Fine. Yeah. You're building right. it spiritually, and Taylor says you're building it. It's for real. Right. Uh, incidentally, learning Torah in general is where the base Hamikdash went into. The Gilo is in Dalar Amos of Alacha, and it says why the advantage they had over the, fir the first base Hamikdash is the fact that they learned Torah. The early Torah was 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 uh, proper. Sure. The first one, and therefore it says. It says the majority of Yidim were Avidi Avidi Zara during the first era of the Beis Hamikdash. However, they studied Torah Lishma. properly. Lishma. Lishma. This is at length with, with, with the Mikkel Rebbe's, yeah. Mikkel Rebbe. and the learning Torah is compared to the brain. So just like the smallest something happens in the brain is a much bigger effect than, let's say, the hand or the foot. So to that mitzvah has that tremendous effect in uh, in everything. The Beis Hamikdash So it is uh, interesting to note that lechatchila. How did we lose the Beis Hamikdash? Was connected to limud atayra, the lack of it. So for sure, by learning Torah, we're making it. Okay, the time, the time. Fine, we're Sorry to interrupt you. I keep interrupting you. Uh, it's okay. You can send it to Mashiach Talk at gmail dot com. Nice, yeah. Or Mashiach Talk. Or you can How do you spell talk? How do you spell talk? Moshiach talk. Moshiach is M O S H I A C H. Talk is T A L K at gmail.com. Thank you.